This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hey, aloha. Welcome to 2019. Welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studios for another episode of Security Matters Hawaii. Energy Security Guy here, and today we've got Dr. Robert Fish with us. He is from Princeton University. He's out here representing the IEEE and a, a bunch of other organizations, as near as I can tell. Uh, so we're going to have some fun today getting into, um, I think, uh, the Institute for Electrical and Electronic Engineering, uh, okay. something we don't talk about a lot. You guys have all heard me rant and raving about how our, our industry evolved ignoring standards, with, which these guys have built for a reason. So hopefully we'll get into some of that discussion. Thanks for letting me interrupt your holiday celebrations and coming into the studio. Good well, to see you. Well, thanks for having me on the show. I'm really happy to talk to some of the people here about uh, some of these technology things going on. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so you, uh, uh, so you, I tell you what, give a, go ahead and give our, our audience a, just some, some of your background, as much as you care to share, and uh, well, that way they'll get to know you a little bit better. Oh, sure. Uh, well, let's see. Um, I, uh, I've been in the telecommunications industry for most of my career. Uh, I started at Bell Laboratories uh, several decades ago. We won't be too specific. <laughs> Um, but uh, um, so first at Bell Labs, and then uh, I worked for um, uh, Panasonic actually for a uh -huh. while in their communications business. And uh, finally, I did uh, I did a startup on um, mobile mobile device management. Oh wow, MDM. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. And uh, after that, um, been doing some consulting, and I've been in Princeton for about four years now, trying wow. to. Uh, tell, tell me about MDM. Were, were you ahead of when everyone, before everyone knew they want that? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I think, mean, you know, it became a, quite a cluster for many organizations, right? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, device management really came into its own when uh, we started having such diversity of devices yeah. going on the network and a lot of competitive um, networks coming up and each device had to be... Uh, had to be configured separately, and um, some countries, they people were on more than one network, and uh -huh. they were swapping SIMs constantly, and uh, you had to reconfigure the device for, for every network it went on. And Ouch. as the uh, as the mobile industry grew into the billions, it, it became a, a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> so is that something you continued with, or did you, did you roll that one off and go Get in some other stuff, or no? That was that business was sold. Actually, it was sold to uh, Alcatel Lucent. Now, oh wow! Now uh, Nokia, and uh, they're doing their thing. So I, I think uh, uh, I'm on to other things. Wow! So on, so so from was there an, an entrepreneurial spirit early at Bell Labs? I've, I've heard that. I know 3M's got that sort of reputation. I didn't know how it was that. Well, did you guys build like? Or RS four eighty five two. What, what is you? What were you developing back there? I mean, well, DTMF. I think, <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, DTMF was was created at Bell Labs in yeah. uh, about nineteen sixty, I think. Okay, so, so this was after you got before you got there. Yeah, sorry, before I got there, I, my work at the labs was primarily on um, visual communications. Oh, okay. Wow. So you know, today when you look at you take out your cell phone and you can see somebody and and chat with them and know that they're available to chat. Ah, that, gotcha. that was kind of the work that, that we did there. Interesting. And uh, um, uh, yeah, so we did some of the very first, I would say, IP-based, internet protocol-based uh, video um, video communications wow, systems. Wow, okay. And uh, you know, a lot of the features that you might see on a Skype or on a uh, Google Hangouts today are things that we pioneered way back wow. when. Wow. You know, what we're using now, all of you out there, yeah, see, you're well, benefiting from the from all of his work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you know, for a long time, people thought that um, people didn't want to see each other when they communicated, mm. and uh, uh, it just turned out that the technology was a little premature. Sure. But uh, but actually, people people do it. Yeah, they can't even hear you if they can't see you, right? Because there's so much communication is your face and your expression and all that, all those cues they get about what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think it's that kind of informal communication that really turned out to be the niche, not the more formal business-oriented things, mm -hmm. but, you know, bringing out, taking out your cell phone at some airline lounge and calling your kids back home, that turned out to be uh, the yeah. killer app for that. Sure, and it just, it just enabled a bunch of wonderful holidays for many people, I'm sure, who couldn't be together, so they Skyped in and you know, talk with their grand. I miss my granddaughter. I was like, what? What? I was like an hour late. She was gone. So, 
My bad there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you've uh, so t so get us into your uh, engagement with IEEE. Is this a long long time relationship there? Or? Oh yes. So I've been a member of IEEE for again decades. Okay. Yeah. Um, so IEEE is uh, I, for those in your audience who don't know IEEE uh, started out as uh, the Institute for Electrical and Electronic Engineering. Um, it goes back actually to 1884. Wow. Thomas Edison uh, actually was uh, one of the startups. Startup people oriented towards it. Um, today, it's a global organization. We have about 420,000 members all around wow. the world. About half of them in North America, and for these purposes, Hawaii is part of North America. Yay! <laughs> yeah, you, you've seen pictures of us down in the Caribbean, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, about half in the in the rest of the world: uh, India, China, Middle East, Africa, Europe. Okay. So all over. And I triple E is. Um, basically a way for people to, who are engineers or engineers and scientists in, in the electrical or electronic areas uh, to have a kind of professional home that's uh, okay. global in nature and uh, allows them to meet their peers all around the world, those peers both sort of geographically as well as in their own individual discipline. Mm. And uh, IEEE has, uh, it's divided into societies so our biggest society is our computer society, as you might guess. Okay. Um, and then uh, communication society, signal processing, power and energy. We have 46 societies and councils. Really? Yeah. So, That's interesting. We, only have, we have 16 um, NIP sectors for the National Infrastructure Protection Plan, but 46 societies yeah, supporting so it. everywhere from ocean engineering to oh, okay. ferromagnetics to, uh, you know, a variety of uh, oh. other areas. Uh, uh, microwave uh, techniques and um, uh, technology, which uh, actually had their big conference here in Hawaii about a year and a half, a year okay. and a half ago. Okay. But my association in, in IEEE has been primarily in uh, uh, communication society and with the standards association. Wow. And uh, but I belong to a few others as well. So we have, you know, we always have uh, ISOs, and I'm on a, an ST a standards technical panel with UL currently trying to work on the our, our industry's toys. Yeah. Um, Talk a little bit about that, the role IEEE played or where they fit in that, that realm of standards development or, or standards publication or how, and how that's used. Yeah, so IEEE uh, as a standards organization is a little different than some of the big, uh, some of the other international standards organizations. We are international, but we're uh, primarily kind of market driven. We're bottom okay. up driven by people who have technical contributions and uh, have some idea for some technology that they think the market will expand for if it becomes standardized. Oh, I see. Um, awesome. So in IEEE, really, individual members get to vote, or your company can join, and and your company can vote on and ballot on a standard, things like that. Uh, you know, if you compare this to something like ITU, the International Telecommunications mm -hmm. Union, there it's a country-based system. So okay. one country, one vote. And uh, uh, it's a sort of more formal, I would say, huh. uh, organization based out of the United Nations in Geneva. And uh, so IEEE tries to uh, involve individuals in, in technology development and then in technology standardization. And I think that's really our, our uh, unique niche, if, huh. if you will. And do, you ha do standards organizations kind of play well? I mean, obviously, internationally, we all need to hmm. understand what we're talking about, you know, and... We didn't get on the metric system, you know, so we, we they still, I don't well, know, if, I don't know if anyone knows what a mile is yet, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, outside the U.S. anyway. But um, is that, um, how, I guess, how are, how are they, how do they relate? Is, are there charts of comparative standards and things like that, or well, it's, um, it's, uh, do they focus it's, in different areas? Yeah, it's a marketplace out there, right? Sure. And, um, some things you absolutely need to have uh, international standards in which countries agree. Uh, a typical one would be spectrum allocations because okay. radio waves don't know where the boundary between <laughs> U.S. and Mexico or Canada <laughs> are. They just go. So you need to have some, some, um, some international agreements with regard to spectrum. But in many other areas, there are a hierarchy of standards. There okay. are local market-driven ones. There are ones that are national in, in nature and then ones that are regional or international. Um, and the organizations talk to each other. They do talk to each other. Um, uh, IEEE, for instance, is a sector member for ITU, and um, 
you know, we have joint conferences and things like that together. So um, there is a, a large degree of cooperation between the organizations. And uh, frankly, a lot of people work in both of those kinds of environments. Mm, I see, which makes sense. I mean, it, it's, it's what's super important is that if, if, and if, you, if you haven't ever come across these sort of problems, when, when, when you've got a technology, our, my security industry is a great example of this, that's developed and ignored pieces of, of normal standards or left them out, you, you really end up with things like some of the cyber problems that we, we've had in our industry today. As a great example, where there were standards for internet protocol and standards for TCP and the things you should do that, that we just didn't do. Yeah. And so when you ignore standards or try to develop applied technologies outside of standards, I think it really can create a problem. Ours has been 30 years in the making, and I, it might be 30 years in the unmaking. I don't know, but it's yeah. really grim. Yeah. Well, I think the thing about standards are really that it, it's a terrific way to open markets. Okay. Because uh, if you if multiple manufacturers or service providers or uh, others who are involved in an industry are building towards a standard, then whatever it is that they're promoting or selling or distributing has a wider market. It can have a market uh -huh. not only in you know their local area, but uh, perhaps in in other areas around the world. Growth in markets means growth in revenues, typically, and mm -hmm. when there's growth in revenues, you know everybody wins. So, sure. so okay. that that's really that's really the important part about about adopting standards. And you know, in IEEE, really, our view is that um, there's no monopoly on good ideas. Yeah. You know, like it's not a situation where only the guys sitting in Washington or Beijing or something have the had the best ideas. The best ideas come from the bottom, from lots of practicing engineers or people who uh, are in the business and are installing, for instance, security things sure. in, in companies or in factories, and they say, oh, here's a problem. Let's, let's see if there's some technology that, that could, uh, can fix this. Mm -hmm. And I think the other big area, of course, in, in, in standards is lots of safety-oriented things, yeah. right? Sure. I mean, uh, electrical standards, you know, it's it's considered poor form to install an electrical system that you know catches on fire regularly uh, yeah, or <laughs> things like that. So um, does it happen outside the U.S. much? Do you know? Is it a? I have no. Do you have any on visibility on the, on the global picture for that? I've heard, I've seen ugly images. Obviously, you know yeah. we all have, right? You sure, sure. Dar Darwin Award candidates and things like that. <laughs> Mercy. Well, let's. Um, speaking of Darwin, let's. Um, I tell you what, we'll take. A, about a one minute break, we'll pay some bills and we'll be right back with uh, Dr. Fish. Thank you. With the help of a physical therapist, physical therapists treat pain through movement and exercise. No warning labels required. And you get to actively participate in your care. Choose to improve your health without the risks of opioids. Choose physical therapy. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m., and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Aloha, welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studios. Andrew, the security guy here, I'm with Dr. Robert Fish from the IEEE, and uh, we're talking a little bit about standards and, and IEEE standards and how standards work in industry, but we also want to figure out what brings a guy that's teaching up in Princeton out to Hawaii other than the beautiful sunshine in December. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's the new year, so yeah. we should all start the new year in a pleasant In Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great, but uh, we have a couple of events coming up here yeah. in Hawaii. Um, so on the uh, 19th of January, uh, just before the PTC uh, uh, show And that's the here. Pacific Telecommunication Conference? Yes, Pacific Telecommunications Council, Council Conference. Yes. yes. Uh, so here's a piece of it. It's a one-day uh, pre-event. Yes, that's right. One-day pre-event uh, at the same location at the Hilton Hawaii, Hawaiian Village here in Honolulu. And... Uh, what we're trying to do is bring to Hawaii some of the best uh, speakers on some new telecommunications technologies. Awesome. And um, uh, what we'd like to be able to do is offer something to those of you out there who are 
maybe um, not researchers in telecommunications, okay. but, but just using it within your general work and would like to find out where things are going. So we have things about optical networking and satellite communications and uh, some things about public safety networks, um, AI, AI is always a big deal Yeah, these everywhere, days. sure. Yeah, yeah, artificial intelligence, some stuff on uh, security uh, as well, machine learning. So a, a variety of topics where we bring in experts and provide, you know, maybe about 40 minute talks on, on mm -hmm. these areas and have a day long program um, for that. So um, we're really looking forward to doing that. This is the second year that we've done it. Okay. Uh, last year we met over at the uh, East West Center okay. um, awesome. and uh, at the University of Hawaii and this year um, we decided to sort of be in conjunction with PTC and see yeah, whether or not some of their audience might be interested in our work as well. Yeah, I saw that the, um, you know, if you get a PTC registration, this is included or you can just get this for one day and it might have been an extra charge or something. Yeah, something but, like that. But yeah, it's, it's yeah. there so and you can just go down to this for the day as well. So you know, get down to Hilton Hawaii. The, now, now this, this type of work here isn't purely academic. Well, um, yeah. Or, that, some, or, or it is, but it's leading into development well, or applied. Yeah, so, you know, IEEE has, um, I forget the number now, but it's something like 1,600 conferences a year around the world. Really? Yeah. 1,600? So, yeah, it's like so, four a day every day or something. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh it's amazing. God. But um, one of the things, those, a lot of those conferences are, as you say, kind of academic or research okay. focused. Uh, maybe you need a PhD to, to really to understand. To get on the, get on the oh, oh, <laughs> get to on. get a seat in the audience. No, no, not necessarily. <laughs> you can always sit in the audience. But, uh, uh, but these talks, while it's building on that work, are not, are not at, um, at that sort of research, cutting edge research level, but really they're um, kind of uh, synopsis of some of the latest research work and where the technology is going in these various hmm. areas, you know? In your experiences, um, just, just came, a question just sort of came to me. Let's just take in the communications realm. How, how far ahead are we researching things, maybe it's just DARPA work, but how, how far out there is the research before, I mean, let's just say 10 or 20% of it actually gets applied in the industry and, and used? You know, is it a decade? Is it five years? Is yeah, it, what well, do you it, see? it goes, it's certainly anywhere from five to 10 to sometimes 20 years, wow. depending upon That's how something. fundamental the technology is. You know, like uh, one of the talks that we have to, uh, in Communications Futures is on optical networking. And of course, optical networking really depends on lasers being put into uh, fiber optic mm -hmm. channels. But the laser was invented in the late 50s, early 60s, depending upon who you believe. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, fiber optics came along about 10, 10 years later. And uh, today it's uh, you know, a primarily uh, a world gurgling uh, uh, mechanism for transmitting communications. Sure. But it's a, it's a, uh, uh, you know, a development that's, that's lasted over 50 or 60 years. Mm -hmm. So early research for very, uh, very primary kinds of inventions like the laser take a long time. Um, but some things, you know, you might invent this year and see them in a product in three or four years. It really depends on the, on the nature of what the innovation is. Hmm. What we need, I think, um, after what we saw last week with CenturyLink, <laughs> is some self-healing fiber hack technology because of a lot of the country so we even had some issues out here so it's amazing yeah. what what you know very this very robust infrastructure can can have issues well there are there are always trade-offs right yeah. so you can you can you can uh, build a network that's self-healing you can build a network that's uh, redundant but you have to be willing to spend the money yeah oh <laughs> the spend there's the capital spend right, yes. right so capex opex all of that really goes into how uh, how rigorous a job you're doing in building the network mm. and, and what you expect for reliability out of it. Every, everything costs money, even sure. in security, you know. Yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> um, do these, um, these presenters that you bring now, these are uh, from around the world? Around look, the world, look, yeah. Looking at the, uh, uh, yeah, looking at from the... From Asia, US, uh, Europe, every place, really. And uh, uh, because I, IEEE truly is a, a global organization, mm -hmm. so there are people doing just tremendous work, just every place you can think of. Is it hard to get them to come to Hawaii in December, in January? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not hard. It's not hard to persuade them. Um, but uh, um, uh, 
uh, you know, the, they're people who are busy too, so yeah, they, they need to take some time out and get across the ocean. To, you and, know? and talk about their, yeah. their, their focus of their work. Is, um, so this is the second year for this event. What's the s sort of turnout? How, how's it, how's it, it must, must have been successful last year, so you're back. Yeah, well, we have, we have a room for everyone who wants to come. Nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I, we should be so lucky to have only standing room. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, That's what it, you hope for. It's a After today, you might. There's, yeah. you know, there's no telling who we're, who we're It's a Saturday, and I know a lot of people in Hawaii like to go to the beach on the weekends. Uh, uh, instead uh, of get their brain <laughs> filled up, I see. But uh, so we're asking a little bit, uh, a little bit for you to, you know, take a detour and maybe learn something new that you can apply in, sure. in your own areas. So. Yeah, and I saw, I thought the, there was some underwater, like, um, uh, it was, so there was that PTC focus or was it in, in this event? Because there's, there's been a concern that the technology there's grown so quickly they can just bypass Hawaii. Now, they used to have to come here and come up out of the water and oh, get, get, a, yeah. get a little relay, but yeah, now they can just go by us. And so it's like, <laughs> hey, wait, don't forget about Hawaii. <laughs> Yeah, so Hawaii is uh, very centrally located you think? From, the, from the point of view of the Pacific Ocean, but it's uh, right in the center. So yeah. sometimes there, there are some long distances involved there. Yeah, so I think some of the PTC sponsors are some of the local groups here that are, and we're working on, I think we're landing one new fiber. Some, some of our stuff's, you know, maybe 20 years old now, so yeah. it's starting to age out. So there's a concern about, we have capacity now, but there's that, there's always the, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you know, what if we, what if we let that die, you know, what will we do? Well, I mean, you know, fiber optics relies on, in essence, communications technologies when it's not in a light form. And yeah. so that's electronics. Yeah. And electronics has a limited lifetime. And, um, of course, uh, there, there's always Moore's Law, right, which indicates that the semiconductors that you used three years ago are are now improved to about double the capacity. That, for half the price. Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> something like that. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's not surprising that you have to renew your, your uh, electronics, certainly on a regular yeah. basis. And uh, assuming a shark or something doesn't actually devour the cable, yeah. the, the fiber can stay there for a little longer, I think. Has, um, has the attrib we ventured into um, any of the protection? I'm a member of InfraGuard. There's a lot of talk about... Um, uh, you, 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 you know, electromagnetic bursts and things like that, and a lot of this equipment that we talk about that's long haul relay equipment is above the, is above the surface and it's unshielded. Uh -huh. Does that so typically I, work I, on some of that? Or? I suggest you shield it. <laughs> uh, of course, I, and I actually, I, the, I think the grid's broken up where Texas has its own and they're actually pretty good. Texas has its own uh, 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 electrical grid. Right, right, yeah, so yeah. that equipment, I guess they've done a good job, but out west they haven't, and I, I'm just, when I learned these things at some of these conferences, I'm like, really? Like, so I didn't know if does that trip we have um, well, we have a shielding society, standards or well, oh, I, I, we have a society for nuclear and pl plasma physics. So okay, uh, oh, that's a question that <laughs> wow, you might be able to ask. <laughs> I don't them. know if I want them in here or not. They 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 have to host their own episode for that. <laughs> wow, interesting, yeah. interesting stuff. Yeah. So what um what's what's your role? I know you're you're doing communication. This is actually put on by by the by SOCOM. Uh, out Comsoc. Of, Comsoc out right. of IEEE, which so is the, the communication society. The communication society, and That's so you, right. um, you work on the standards body, but you're also well, of course, helping to promote. Yeah, so actually, I uh, I'm president of the standards association. So okay, I mean, some examples of uh, IEEE standards include things like uh, almost all of our local area networking. So yep. IEEE 802.3 is otherwise known as Ethernet. 802.11 is known as Wi-Fi. Um, we have uh, 802.15 is Bluetooth. So, um, you know, many, many, many of our communications technologies have been standardized mm -hmm. in, in IEEE. And, uh, you know, each one of the things I just named have next generation things coming up. Oh, so, awesome. you know, being a member of the Communication Society and being a, uh, a, an active participant in uh, IEEE standards is a very... Um, um, they help each other out a lot, so it's I bet a, they do. Yeah, I've um, it was interesting. I had never been on a, on a panel. I'm not an engineer, so yeah. they invited. They wanted an integrator voice at this UL, this STP uh -huh. we're building for the the 2900 series. I don't know. Okay, I'll try. It's very interesting to watch the. It takes a long time to develop sort of consensus around even the approach to building the standard, and and so it was. Well, that's so a great it's a thing. Lot of fun. To, it's a great thing to mention. So, for instance, one of the standards that we have is about power over Ethernet. Yeah. So you can have Ethernet, but you also do power. But when you do that, you're bringing two industries that haven't typically talked to each other together, the electrical power industry and the communications industry. And so 
safety standards have to be there because if you're going to be putting power over communications cables then you need to make sure that you know no no ignition occurs yeah exactly you know what inappropriate you don't want crosstalk to get a little hot spot that's right we don't want a hot spot in in power over ethernet yeah, yeah for sure <laughs> yeah it's interesting i um i saw this guy's making a, just to that point making a, a super cable um instead of 24 gauge he's twisting 20 gauge mm. and taking power and data quite a bit further which yeah. is not standard but like sometimes i got to run a camera and i don't want to have to have an a a a, 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 a uh, injector you right. know at the at the end of the standardized distance of course you got to get a waiver for that in the installation because the installation says yeah. you got to absorb the standard so it's kind of interesting yeah sometimes so but that's a, that's a great example right so uh, a, a practitioner such as yourself sees the need for some new piece of technology yeah. something that'll go further distance or give yeah, higher power just save a little money you know, you know that's all, basically. something like that and and <laughs> And someone like you can, you know, actually become a participant. Anybody can become a participant in IEEE standards. It's just you just have to show up. Basically, that's awesome. Yeah. So get in, get engaged with these standards bodies. If you, if you if you're not familiar with this stuff, look up. IEEE has a chapter in Hawaii. Oh, absolutely. It, and section it's, uh, right here. A yeah. section, okay. And it's yeah. um, we meet you, once on month. the website. You can go to the IEEE IEEE.org. Yes, IEEE.org. Okay. Org, and find sure. that, yeah. and then join just those type guys. Up Hawaii section. I mean, so over here in Makiki, I think. There uh, you go. And so <laughs> find out what they're up to. Um, probably meet some other folks. Is it all engineers? Is it practitioners? What, what kind of group are yeah, you it's, into? Yeah, it's everything, really. Okay. You know, awesome. people, people from some small startups, some professors, some students. Students are more than welcome. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, everyone. Awesome. So check that out. Check out a couple weeks from now on Saturday, the 19th, the Summit for Communications Futures. Uh, learn some stuff about what's happening in the space. And um, uh, go definitely spend some time on the IEEE website. I think you'll, you'll learn a lot about what these guys are up to and how broad the reach is of this organization. Um, Dr. Fish, I really appreciate your time today. Oh, well, thank, thank you. Thank so you so much for coming down. I know you're on holiday, but uh, is that what you're doing? there you go. There you go. <laughs> and um, I, I really do appreciate that. And thank you out there for joining us uh, because security matters. Aloha.